Hello, everybody, <clears throat> and welcome. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, okay. So, hello, everybody, and welcome to this video because obviously this is something that's happening right now. Okay, so, um, first off, uh, fingering the mundane, 32%. 395, eight beautiful backers, the um, telethon <laughs> riding and wine stream last night went really well, and we got really fucking deep, so if you haven't seen that yet, um, go into my videos and look at that, because that was, um, just so you know, the first like 45 minutes of it, I forgot that I had it on unlisted, so nobody knew it was happening, but after that, um, a bunch of people came in and shit got deep and things it was it was a lot of fun um but um we did get another backer through it last night so thank you so much and um hopefully this will just start kicking it into high gear <coughs> but um i got some questions today from a lovely lovely person who um had questions about submitting work, whether it's poetry or short stories or whatever, to different magazines and stuff like that. <clears throat> and this is one of those um, kind of weird areas that I don't think really a lot of people talk about because it's a fucking pain in the ass. So um, I figured... I would talk about it, because that's what I do. So, um, let me pull these questions up here. Let me see here. Okay. <clears throat> the first question was, I was wondering what your process was for sending in submissions, and if you ever had trouble with it. Okay. So, this is very broad, but, um, yes, uh, there, you always have trouble with sending in submissions, and, um, this is where you have to start taking, like, fucking copious notes, okay, with all your shit, like, have a spreadsheet, um, with all your, um, poems or short stories in it, um, and then this is where it gets tricky because every magazine is going to have a different, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like a different response time. So you need to like write like where you sent it to, the date, and what their average response time is or else you'll never know. Because a lot of times you won't hear back from them. But if you don't hear back from them after a certain amount of time you can assume that they have rejected your work. And um, so you need to have that on there so you know not to um, submit that again or post it on your website <clears throat> or put it in a book or whatever. Um, the other thing with that is that makes it a little bit tricky is that... Um, uh, some places are fine with you doing simultaneous submissions, which basically means, like, if you sent it to um, uh, Magazine A, they don't mind if you also send that poem to Magazine B as long as you tell Magazine A that Magazine B accepted it, if it gets accepted. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool, because some places like doing that. Other places, like, even though they shouldn't care, other places do get snippy. Like, um, well, why the fuck did you send this to me if you were just going to send it someplace else? That's not very professional, but that is something that happens. And um, I've even had someone tell me, we're not going to accept anything from you anymore, or please don't submit to us anymore, since you, like are just sending your shit anywhere. Like, and that's a fucking stupid way to be. And that magazine probably folded, so it doesn't fucking matter. So that's a whole other thing. Um, 
but when it comes to my process, this is when, <clears throat> how do I say this? When you're a writer, you write because the urge makes you write, okay? Or you're just like a cookie cutter typer that um, writes stories, so whatever. I'm not talking to those people because I don't understand how those people function. I know they exist. I know they are successful, but I don't understand that mindset, so I can't speak to that mindset. But um, for people who write because they have to write, um, turning from being a writer into admin man <clears throat> is really tricky because... Like, it, it's like a fucking job. It drains the life out of you if you're not careful. So be careful is what I'm basically saying. But when I'm like, okay, I'm going to start sending shit out today. And this should happen every day. It doesn't, but it should. I should do this every fucking morning. But um, you basically search and scour the web for places that are open <clears throat> and um who want submissions and um then you go through their submission guidelines look for what they want if they're going to pay or not and then you have to decide if you care if they're going to pay you or not which you should and all this other shit then you have to look at how they want their shit sent in so it's like um do they want it double space? Do they want it in a certain font? Do they want you to ha do a cover letter? Do they want you to have like your name and address and phone number and social security number and driver's license number and your mom's maiden name and all that other shit at the top of the poem? I don't know why some people want that. Like the day somebody fucking mails me something, I'm going to lose my shit. Um, but, you know, maybe they'll send you a free copy of the magazine if you get accepted or whatever. So that's fine. So you got to figure all this shit out. And then a lot of um, better places to submit to um, use this uh, thing called Submittable, which is a website that a lot of magazines use. And um, you could submit through there. And then in there, you have, um, it tells you, like, where you've submitted to, what date you submitted to, if they've opened it, if they've read it, if they accepted it, if they rejected it. Um, I've had places that are, like, bigger magazines, like, reject my shit and send me an email telling me they rejected my shit, but then never did it on Submittable, which I don't understand. <clears throat> But it's a nice site, it kind of streamlines everything, and it gives you like a written record. So if you're someone who doesn't like to do spreadsheets and doesn't like to keep track of your shit, um, doing it, just submitting to places who only submit through Submittable would probably be a good idea. Um, but like honestly, if you know you're not good at keeping notes of stuff, just submit through Submittable, like whatever um, places that is. And I'm sure there's other things like Submittable out there. I think there, there is one, because I remember I had to use it, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, but I can't remember what it's called. Um, also, Duotrope. If you haven't signed up for Duotrope yet, that's a pretty good um, site to everyday check and see who's um, looking for submissions or who's accepting submissions. <clears throat> and I will say this, especially if you are a female, if you are a person of color, if you are um, gay or at all in the LGBTQ community, submittable is like a fucking cash cow because there are so many places who only want submissions from women, who only want submissions from people of color or um, LGBTQ. Like, there's so many. Like, I mean, I haven't looked on there in a while because I was getting annoyed 
that me being a stupid cis white male, um, there was nowhere for me to submit. So that's fine. I just like, I wasn't getting a lot of stuff out of that site for poetry. Now there's a ton of shit for fucking short stories and shit. And I think you could even, um, query agents through there. So that might be something you want to do too. Um, so that's a duo trope. D U O trope with an E because if not, it would be trop. Okay. Um, are there any places I should avoid? Um, this depends on, I don't want to say like how precious you are with your work, but, um, I would say new magazines, um, new websites. If it's a website and you can't tell what their traffic's like, you might want to ask them in a nice way. Don't come off as a dick, but ask in a nice way like what kind of traffic they get um, and where their traffic comes from uh, because that's really important. But if it's like a magazine, if they're on like volume one, issue one, or just issue one, um, you might want to try it, but if they're on issue two or three, that usually means that there's a good possibility that they'll never put another issue out. So, um, I would say stick with the high number magazines, the high number volumes. So if it's like issue two and you're like, oh, I don't want to send there, but it's like volume 23, it's fine. Um, you can do that. Um, <clears throat> but it's just like a lot of places like that close. And that's why, um, building a spreadsheet, like building a database of places to submit to is really fucking hard because like you'll submit to them one month and then the next month you send them an email and the email bounces and you're like, fuck man. Um, so I end up spending a lot of time, uh, redoing my database because there's every, every time I am like going on a huge submission cycle where I'm just sending shit out to everybody <clears throat> every time I do that, there's at least, I would say three or four places that I have to take off because they've gone under. And as someone who, um, has done magazines before and fanzines and shit like that, it happens all the time. Like I've had a lot of different zines like, go to issue, like, one or two, and then never do another issue again. <clears throat> and it's not because, usually, this is the sad part, usually it's because my printer breaks, and I just, like, I'm like, fuck, I can't do this anymore, I have to buy a new printer. But that's besides the point. Um, and then, uh, to go on that topic, um, I am starting a new zine, called The Bloodshed Review, and it's a poetry um, magazine. And so, um, and issue one will come out this fall, so if anyone wants to submit to it, <laughs> let me know. And um, again, it, for those of you who didn't watch the thing last night, Weird Mass 25 was supposed to come out on Friday. I was waiting on some people for some shit, and I didn't get the stuff, and I didn't have time this weekend to... Um, like, finish the copy and all that shit. So, um, that will come out in August, but I'm not going to put a date on it, because, um, I just, if I do a date, I'm going to miss the date, and then everyone's going to be like, where's it at? I was looking for it, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, so there's that. <clears throat> um, so those are the places I would avoid. Any place that I'm the editor of, I would avoid. <laughs> um, do you have to have PayPal to get paid? You don't, but you should. Either PayPal or Venmo. I would say PayPal and Venmo. Um, and then um, I think one place wanted to pay me through Cash App one time. Um, and I don't have that. And I don't even think the magazine ever came out. So um, I'm not really worried about that. Um, have you ever had trouble with not getting paid for your work? Okay, listen. Of course. Um, poetry, especially, is a thankless sport. 
um, yeah, like you, like people do, um, kind of fuck you around a little bit. Um, it happens like, I wish it didn't. And it doesn't happen all the time. And honestly, one time I did get dicked around with pay. It wasn't because I got dicked around, but it was from a bigger publication that I was like shocked. Like, why haven't they sent me my money yet? And it turns out that, um, I fucked up when I was sending them my PayPal address. Like I did like dot co instead of dot com or dot con instead of dot com. Um, and it's a stupid mistake that someone should have been able to go, Oh, that there's no dot con. I'll just do dot com. But it's cause I have big stupid fingers and I type fast or type fast for me and just, I'm not paying attention. Um, so yeah, but, um, Usually, if someone says they're going to pay you, they usually pay you really quick. Um, usually. But. But, yeah, I think one of the bigger problems you'll run into is that with smaller magazines and zines and shit like that, and even websites. Um, oh, okay, we'll talk about websites in a second. Let's just talk about this shit for right now. So what, what you'll end up running across is someone will say, hey, we're going to give you $10 for this poem or um, whatever. And you're like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. And it's a new magazine, okay? But you don't put that together right away. And you're just like, yo, this motherfucker's going to give me $10. bucks. i am let's, let's do this. I'll send this motherfucker poems every fucking day of the week. Um, and then you don't hear from them. The magazine misses its fucking publication date. Shocker. And then, um, either you never hear from them again, or weeks later, you find out, like, oh, hey, um, because, like, our pre-sales or our mailing list wasn't growing at a rate we wanted to, and we just don't think we could pay the writers and we don't want to put something out if we can't pay the writers and blah, 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 blah. And it's kind of like this, like, altruistic, kind of nice guy attitude. So it's okay, but you just get bummed out. Because, like, you need to be sending... Like, if you want to just, like, make a living as, like, a writer who sells shit to magazines and stuff and websites, you need to be doing this every fucking day. And just have, like, a filing cabinet full of, like, themes with your shit in it. Or, like, a computer. But um, some people have filing cabinets, I've heard. Okay. So, other than that. Websites. This is a completely different thing. Because a lot of places... Not a lot of places, but some places. And places I've dealt with. They um, <clears throat> want to pay you a percentage based off of the... Um, the ad revenue and that's murky at best because you will never know unless it's one of these places that gives you the login and you are and this usually happens with article writing not like fiction or poetry but they want you to do basically all the work and the editor at said site is really like I don't even know why they would call themselves an editor because they want you to self-edit everything you do they want you to add pictures to it. They want you to add links to everything. So I don't even know what the fuck their job is. But, like, supposedly they're an editor. Um, and then you get paid off of clicks. And um, I don't know how long that takes and all this other shit. But supposedly, because things on the internet are technically evergreen, since people could go click on them all the time, you could get constant residuals through that. And people who write articles or who write for sites that do stuff like that, they, um, if they are putting out a ton of content, then um, they are making, not bank, but they could be making good money because if, I don't know, like the site gets 100 to 200 or 1,000 hits a day and their uh, fucking articles get read 
a fraction of those times and a fraction of those times links are actually clicked then you get paid for all this shit and if the company is a good company you will get checks every so often when they figure out what the fuck's going on but it's slippery and there's no way of you checking like what they're doing so if they pay you at all it's kind of out of the goodness of their heart I guess I don't know, there's probably going to be some people who are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, but, no, like, th these are experiences I've had, and I can only talk from my experience, because I'm the only person here. Um, is it more difficult to write when you know you're writing for a specific thing? Yes and no. It depends on if you feel that specific thing. There are people, and I brought them up earlier, who can write anything about anything at any time. And because they almost have, like, a formula in their head about how things are supposed to go. So they, like, okay, take out um, Exhibit A, put in Exhibit B. Take out Exhibit C, put in Exhibit D. And they could just do that fucking until the cows come home. And they're super fucking talented at doing that. And that's, that's an art in and of itself. And it's an art I've never been able to master. So, um, but a lot of people can do that. And those people... Um, kill it and so they can do whatever the fuck they want now for me it's a little different because like if you remember doing like when um, I was doing a lot of the weird mask races where we would pull stuff out of a hat and go okay now write a story about this like doing that was always a kind of practice to do the things that I'm talking about like being able to just write whatever about anything and trying to hit a word count, you know, <clears throat> like as a working writer, you know, like that's the shit that you need to be able to do. But when it comes to like poetry and like, they're like, okay, hit these topics. Um, this is what we're looking for. Like most people would go, oh, okay, let me see if I have anything in my spreadsheet that falls under those topics or keywords. Like, there are people who are very hardcore about how they keep their notes, and that will help them. So if you, like, have a, a spreadsheet that's, like, um, you write the name of the poem, you write what the themes of the poem are, or the uh, format of the poem, um, like, the form of the poem, and then, like, put, like, keywords from the poem that you think would be words that either people would search or, um, like, SEO fucking shit, like search engine optimization. This is, like, getting deep in the weeds here, but you could do this. Or just, like, an overall theme, like, this is very dark. This is um, more of a social stance poem. Um, this is political. This is about love. This is about heartbreak. This is about getting your wiener caught in a blender when you were, thought you were doing the dishes, but you had no clothes on, and everything went tits up, and lights went out, but somehow the power was still on on the blender. Like, things like that. Um, <clears throat> but for me lately, in doing submissions like that, I've had, um, like, really good luck. Like, I uh, submitted this one to a magazine that I'm probably not going to hear from, hear back from until next year, which fucking like breaks my heart because I wrote a fucking poem that I thought was really good. Like they had very specific themes that they were looking for. And I'm like, it's going to take me the rest of my life to go through all my poetry and see if I have anything close to that. So I'm just going to write something new right now. And I did. And I thought it was like, fucking amazing like one of the best things I've ever written I'm super proud of it I sent it off and now it's in the void and I'll probably hear back um, like I said next year sometime like the beginning of the next year and that really fucking pisses me off I'm just like ugh like smaller magazines the turnaround time is so fast and having a fast turnaround time like really builds your confidence because you send something out and then you hear back within a day or two like yeah we're gonna take this this is great 
and you're like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, yeah, you might not have not got paid anything, but you, your shit just got submitted and someone's going to put it out. So that's a big fucking deal. Um, the bigger the magazine is and, like, the bigger the pay and stuff like that, it's going to take longer and longer to hear back. And rejection is going to happen probably 90 to 95% of the time, okay? You're going to get rejected, but that is just life, and that's how it is. So um, good rejection letters will tell you why they rejected something. And if the editor takes the time to, like, tell you, like, hey, just so you know, this is why we didn't accept this, and they go through it, keep that person in mind, because that person thinks enough of you to not send you a form letter. Like, they actually were, were like, hey, like, this is the this is the reason why. So they they will remember you when you submit again, okay? They might not remember you right off the bat, but if um, you even, like, try to uh, have a nice little chat, like... Hey, I, I don't know if you remember me, but I submitted like six months ago and um, you didn't accept it because um, of my description of the male genitals or something like that. Because that happens to me all the time. Um, and just like refresh their memory. And I will say this. Um, when you are writing to editors even after you wrote something to them and they wrote back, if you can grab on to anything they say and remember it. So, um, like if the editor like writes you back and says, I am really sorry. We can't accept this right now because of this, that, and the other. Well, um, it's raining cats and dogs out here in Maine. So take care. Like, Make a note that, oh, shit, the editor lives in Maine. So then next time, if you ever hear anything on the news, like, oh, um, a rock fell out of a tree in Maine and landed six inches from a cat, you could write the editor and go, holy shit, I just heard about that rock falling out of the tree up there in Maine that almost landed on the cat. I was hoping, good God, I hope that's not this editor's cat. You know, like, that's so ridiculous, but that's like kind of a thing. So just remember those things and just start building relationships because what I've noticed more than anything out there, writing and your talent at writing is seriously like maybe 30% of the game. Building relationships with editors is like 100% of the game. So I know I just gave you 130 percentage, but I don't know how else to say that. I would rather per, I would rather promote and publish writers that I think are good people way more than writers who I think write good shit. And I know that sounds fucking stupid, but there there have been writers who I think are fucking assholes that I love their work, but I can't stand them when they talk to me, so I stopped putting their stuff out because by me putting their stuff out, that means I have to fucking talk to them again. So, um, and like one of the problems with Weird Mask right now, with this last issue, is I was going to reprint somebody's story, and they sent me an email telling me that that was great as long as I did this thing. And I'm not going to say what the thing is because whatever but he told me something I had to do for him and I I wasn't like looking to exchange favors I just liked this one story and wanted to put it in but if it's going to turn into a thing where he starts making demands and shit that aren't like oh like can I get payment for it? Like, that would be a legitimate question, okay? But he didn't say that. He, like, demanded me to do something. 
And I'm just like, I'm never going to write this guy again. Like, he was kind of like this before, and that just pushed me over the edge. I'm not going to do that. So, um, be nice to editors. Try to remember things about them. And just try to build relationships with them. Um, so, I guess that's it. I kind of rambled a lot there, but I hope all of this was useful information. Um, again, not again because I didn't talk about it, so I'll just say it here. Like, I don't feel like I've been published in that many websites or magazines compared to the amount of writing that I have. So, like, maybe somebody who doesn't write as much as me would think that I have been published in a lot of places. And actually, I was a little surprised when I was... Um, updating my cover letter and my bio about where I've been published and shit. I'm like, holy shit, I have kind of been published in a lot of places. But, I mean, I write a lot. And for the amount of writing I do, I should be published in, like, like, ten times the amount that was in that thing. So, I'm not saying I'm an expert at this. I'm not saying, like, I'm the end-all, be-all because every place is different, um, the whole deal, but, um, yeah, like, we all just need to get out there and bust our humps a little bit more, you know, and hopefully, um, Weird Mask will be out by the end of the month, um, before the end of the month, hopefully, and then, um, next month, um, I'll start putting together, uh, the Bloodshed Review, the website, I'm building the website right now, um, Fingering the Mundane, let's talk about that one more time, holy shoot balls, we're at 32% um, of the $1,200 flexible goal, we got 16 days left, 8 backers at $395, so um, let's get this thing, I want to try to get this, this is crazy, but I want to get it to the 1200 by the end of this week, so I can start putting the stretch goals in there, because I think I have some really fucking cool and clever stretch goals, but again, doing Indiegogo and stuff like this, I don't know if, um, like, every time I do this, it's kind of a new thing, and I don't know if I'm going to do stretch goals next time, I might just, like, blow my wad in the actual tiers of perks and stuff like that, um, but if you have any, um, ideas about how to do crowdfunding, let me know down below. If you have any questions about anything, you could either send me an email if it's going to be a long-ass question at um, IHateMattWall at gmail.com, or you could leave them in the comments below, and um, I will take a look at it. So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if it was helpful. Let me know. Oh, definitely if you have any experiences dealing with magazines or um, if you're an editor dealing with submissions, leave them down below because this could be like a really good thread of um, what to do and what not to do when submitting. So I hope this answers your question, and I will talk to you guys later. So bye-bye.